Hello! You are now watching Online Robotics with Robocamp and the subject today is Robotic Helicopter. Now this is the stage 3 out of 4, which means that we have already built our robotic helicopter, we're about to find out more about its construction and elements we can use in the next stage, that is programming. Now, if you are a student, for this stage you will need your robotic helicopter, okay? If you are not sure how to, cre how to create it, please click on the previous video where we go step by step building together this amazing model from LEGO We Do 2.0 Bricks. Now, if you are a teacher, hello there, it's good to see you. Uh, you should know that all the materials you can see behind me, you can use with your students too. Also, if you are interested about robotics or would just like to ask us how to start, open the description below and click the links we put there. We'd love to help you. All right, now if you like this video, let us know with thumbs up and if you are ready, let's learn more about this robotic helicopter. The robotic helicopter you see behind me and also in front of me was designed from scratch by Robocamp team. Now, it's best for this stage if you have your robotic helicopter right in front of you as we go through individual elements, individual parts of it, but I'm guessing that not all of you have this helicopter in front of you, so for a moment there I'll switch to a close-up view so that you can see exactly how this construction looks like in my hands. Okay, as you can see it's pretty similar, but I would say identical to uh, the image you saw behind me, but of course when you can see it uh, in real life, in front of a real camera, it's always, well, I would say slightly different. Okay. First, let's analyze, examine what sort of electronics we have put inside this construction. Now behind me you can see uh, all the particular elements in a cross section and here I will show you where exactly they are in my robot. Now first of course we have Smart Hub, a necessary element of any robot made from LEGO We Do 2.0 bricks. Now inside we need charged batteries and once they are put in then the Smart Hub can serve as a link between the robot and the programming software. At the same time, it also serves as a power source to all the other electronics connected to it. In our case, motor and the tilt sensor right here. Okay, now obviously the motor is right here and it is responsible for making this construction move. Now, uh, in a moment we'll see a bit uh, better how exactly the drive created here is going to be transferred to other elements for the, of this construction. But before we do, we have one more electronic element left. It's right here, it's our tilt sensor. And as you can see, it is placed right underneath our helicopter. Mm, those are the three elements that we can actually control and use uh, in the next stage that's yet to come, in the programming stage. So, well, in our program we can already assume that not only we will be able to make this construction move, but also control it to some degree with this tilt sensor. And tilt sensor, of course, detects any changes in tilt of our construction. Now, right next to the tilt sensor, over here, we have landing skids. Now, some helicopters are equipped with wheels, but what this element gives us is that, well, it actually makes 
sure that once the helicopter is down on the ground, the position of the tilt sensor will be, well, perfectly horizontal, unless we are placing the helicopter on a surface that is already tilted. Mm -hmm. Now here you can see an element that is not visible entirely if you look at your robot, or rather it's very hard to see because it is kind of hidden underneath the main rotor. Um, yeah, here it is visible. Now this is actually a transmission shaft. It transfers the movement created in the motor to the back of the helicopter's tail. Now, by default, there, there, we couldn't find an axle so long in the kit, which is why we connected two separate axles by using this axle connector right here to create one very very long axle. Now the movement of this axle starts right here because if you can see it very well on the cross section right here the axle is actually inserted into the motor head of the motor. Now this means that this axle will rotate exactly as the motor. <laughs> okay, and this means that the movement will be transferred right here to the very end of the tail. <laughs> now transmissions are nice, uh, they are very interesting, but actually, well, without, uh, without a sturdy frame, we wouldn't be able to create a stable gear, gear train of any sort, which is why it's very important that this part, mm, that bricks over here are all, uh, you know, joined together well, okay? If everything is uh, as we have done, as we have created it, then uh, all this, this tail frame will stop uh, the construction from falling apart because it will be able to contain all the movement, all the power that is being transferred right here. Now everyone, here comes my favorite part where we can actually track the movement, uh, or rather the drive that is created first in the motor and then is well, transferred throughout our construction, throughout our robot. Now this allows us to predict how the robot will behave once we activate the robot. Okay, so we already know that this transmission shaft, this very, very long axle, will rotate exactly with the same speed as the motor does. Now, on this axle, we have two cogwheels installed. Now, the first one is has 20 teeth and Thanks to its position, it transfers the movement further up to this main rotor. Now, this gear train is actually what we call a bevel gear because both cogwheels are at an angle. Mm -hmm. There's another interesting thing we can observe here. You see, the cogwheel that is on the transmission shaft, the big one, you can see it right here has 20 teeth, but it is meshed with another cogwheel that is that has only 12 teeth. So what can we expect will happen here? Well, since the output gear has fewer teeth, this means that it will rotate faster than this gear and also this entire draw this entire transmission shaft and faster than the motor. Now, this is the first gear train, the gear train responsible for making the main rotor move. Now, if we go right here to the tail, okay, here you can see another gear train. Now, again, this this gear right here will rotate just as fast as the motor, but again, we have uh, a difference when it comes to the number of teeth in this bevel gear. Now, this one has 12 teeth, 
but this one has 20 teeth. Now, what does this mean? This means that actually this bevel gear is a reductor. So the speed, the rotation speed of this rotor will be lower than the speed of our motor. Okay, so basically once we activate the motor, well, we know that both rotors will start rotating. That's great news. Uh, but we also know that the main rotor will, will rotate at a faster rate than the smaller tail rotor in the back. Here you can see how both rotors will look like, how they will behave once the motor is um, starts working. Okay. Now another thing, as you remember, they will rotate at a different pace, and also, well, here uh, on this step, you can see some differences when it comes to our robotic model and real helicopters. Now you see, in real helicopters, this main rotor can actually be tilted forwards, backwards, in all sorts of directions because this allows the pilot to actually, well, fly in all those different directions. Another thing that's, well, different uh, when it comes to our robotic model and real helicopters is that in real helicopters, each rotor is powered separately. Not in ours. Everything comes, all the power comes from this motor right here in the front. Okay, everyone, now that you know everything there is to know about your robotic helicopter, you know all of its possibilities, which elements you can use in programming, how your robot can behave, this means that we can go to the next stage of our lesson where we create a program for this robotic helicopter. So I'll see you in the next video.